On July 29, 2025, something happened that even seasoned geologists called extraordinary. Not because the ground shook, but because the planet itself reacted. In the minutes after the event, atomic clocks drifted, GPS satellites shifted in orbit, and Earth's rotation changed so slightly that only the most precise instruments registered it. It was a signal that something deep inside the planet had snapped. Hours later, the cause became clear. A magnitude 8.8 .8 megathrust earthquake off Russia's Kamchatka Peninsula, one of the strongest seismic ruptures of the 21st century. But the quake's effects stretched far beyond Russia's coastline. They reached into Earth's internal architecture. So the central question is this. How can a single rupture shift the rotation, balance, and timing of an entire planet? The answer begins on one of the most volatile fault systems on Earth, the Kuril-Kamchatka subduction zone. Here, the Pacific plate dives beneath the North American plate in a slow but relentless descent. It moves only centimeters per year, but the force behind that motion is massive. It bends rock, warps the crust, and builds tension silently for decades. Imagine a steel beam being pressed until it bows, storing energy that will eventually demand release. That is subduction. For years, strain accumulated beneath the seafloor. Then, just before midday on July 29th, that boundary snapped. The rupture tore across a fault zone nearly 480 kilometers long and 160 kilometers wide. Some segments jolted forward 9 meters in seconds, a block of crust the size of a city lurching sideways in one violent breath. Because the quake struck only 20 kilometers below the ocean floor, the sea above responded instantly. A massive vertical displacement shoved water upward, triggering tsunami alerts across the entire Pacific Rim. But the wave behavior that followed would challenge early predictions and reveal something deeper happening inside the Earth. Coastlines from Japan to the United States activated sirens. Fishing harbors locked down. Tens of thousands moved to higher ground. Yet the Pacific-wide tsunami that models had feared didn't occur. Across most countries, waves averaged only about one meter disruptive and alarming, but not catastrophic. Near the epicenter, however, ocean dynamics changed dramatically. On Shumshu Island, a towering 19-meter wave surged ashore. Boats weighing several tons were lifted and thrown inland. Warehouses buckled, power lines snapped like twine. Residents fled through knee-deep foam as buildings groaned under the pressure. Russian authorities evacuated more than 2,700 people, many through flooded roads and falling ash from nearby volcanic vents triggered by the quake's shock. Despite these extreme conditions, injuries were minimal. Heavy Soviet-era construction, thick concrete, deep rebar cages, and conservative engineering absorbed forces that would have leveled lighter structures. Meanwhile, Japan faced a different crisis. Evacuations collided with a record heat wave. Dozens suffered heat stroke, and tragically, one person died in traffic while fleeing coastal areas. These indirect impacts often go unreported, but they reveal the secondary systems earthquakes disrupt, transportation, emergency response, and human physiology under stress. And while the surface crisis played out, scientists monitoring seismic and orbital sensors noticed another pattern, one that no local evacuation could explain. When a megathrust shifts billions of tons of rock, the planet's mass distribution changes. Earth reacts the same way a spinning skater does. When their mass moves inward or outward, their rotation speeds up or slows down. The Kamchatka rupture redistributed enough mass to measurably change Earth's spin. Atomic clocks, precise to nanoseconds, registered a slight shortening of the day. Not enough for humans to perceive, but easily detected by timing networks that synchronize satellites, power grids, and global communication. Then another effect emerged. Earth's figure axis, the balance point created by internal mass, migrated. This axis is different from the geographic axis. It's a shifting internal marker defined by how the planet's mass is arranged. Huge quakes can nudge it. Japan's 2011 event moved it nearly 14 centimeters. Chile's 2010 quake shifted it by around 8 centimeters. The Kamchatka rupture produced a displacement in the same range. Entire regions of the peninsula physically moved more than 2 meters southeast. GPS stations recorded instant offsets. Coastlines rose or fell by centimeters, tiny on human scales, enormous in geophysical terms. But despite dramatic headlines, Earth's axial tilt, the 23.4 degrees that drive the seasons, did not change. No earthquake can alter that. Only an impact powerful enough to melt continents could. 
Yet even with this reassurance, the quake had done something remarkable. It became one of the most precisely measured megathrusts in human history. Thousands of sensors, seismic arrays, ocean buoys, and orbiting satellites captured the rupture in real time. For scientists, this was unprecedented, a planetary-scale stress test with instrumentation tuned to observe every ripple. And the data revealed a second mystery. When researchers analyzed the figure axis drift from the quake, they noticed the movement fit into a broader pattern, one that had been growing for decades. Since the 1990s, Earth's balance point has shifted almost 80 centimeters, far more than any single quake could explain. The cause wasn't tectonic, it was human. Massive groundwater extraction, especially in parts of Asia, has moved water from deep aquifers onto the surface. Once pumped, that water flows into rivers, reservoirs, and eventually the ocean. Redistributing water across the globe changes Earth's mass balance, nudging the internal axis by centimeters every year. Melting ice sheets and rising seas intensify the effect. Unlike earthquakes, which strike once and settle, these shifts are continuous and cumulative. The Kamchatka event added a sudden jolt to this long-term human-driven drift. Together, they provide a clearer picture of how Earth responds to mass redistribution, whether that mass comes from tectonic plates or from human extraction. Scientists are using the quake's data to refine continental deformation models, tsunami propagation algorithms, orbital resonance calculations, climate simulations tied to Earth's rotation, and new early warning systems for locked megathrust faults. In other words, the quake didn't just shake the ground, it gave researchers one of the clearest windows yet into the planet's internal mechanics. But even with all this new insight, one unsettling question remains. The Kamchatka megathrust didn't topple the planet's stability. Earth absorbed the shock, rebalanced, and continued rotating with only microscopic changes. But the event exposed something deeper. The planet is not rigid or fixed. It bends, flexes, and recalibrates under forces that build silently for centuries and under pressures created by human activity. The quake became a rare, accidental experiment, a moment when Earth's deep structure responded in full view of modern instrumentation. And now, researchers are watching other megathrust zones with renewed attention, because many of the planet's largest faults, the Aleutian Trench, the Cascadia Subduction Zone, the Nankai Trough, have also been quiet for unusually long periods. Quiet doesn't always mean safe, Sometimes it means locked. So the final question is this. If one rupture can shift Earth's rotation, its internal balance, and the length of a day, what happens when multiple major subduction zones reach critical stress within the same decade? Where does the next planetary scale jolt come from? And what will it reveal about the forces moving beneath us right now? If you followed this far, share your perspective in the comments. Which planetary force do you think has the greatest long-term impact? Tectonics, melting ice, or groundwater loss? I'll be reading and pinning the most insightful responses.